This morning I wake up to learn that there's been another four-wheel driver killed in a four-wheel drive recovery. And this was because they were recovering off the tow ball of the four-wheel drive. So in this video, I want to unpack some of the contributing factors and let's see what we can learn from Ryan's passing. At the start of this video, I just want to pass my personal condolences to the family. I feel your pain. My brother passed away in a single vehicle four-wheel drive related accident some years ago, and I know the pain you're going through right now. There is a future ahead, but my prayers and my heart are with you in this very, very sad and difficult time. I spend a lot of time connecting with four-wheel drive experts in recovery. I'm talking about Robert Pepper, Bob Waller, Casey Lofthouse, I'm talking about Justin Andrews from Factor 55, and many, many others, people who are looking at and considering the recovery aspect of four-wheel driving. And we talk about all sorts of different things and observe things like this. And it's a generally well-held belief that recovering off a tow ball or a tow hitch is an unacceptable practice because it can damage vehicles and people can be killed. And that's what we're seeing in this situation with Ryan's passing. Now, if you have mates who are new to the four-wheel drive space or have maybe been doing it for years but haven't got their head around this, the danger of this, can I encourage you to, if you agree with the comments in, and content of this video, hit that like button, leave a comment down below and share the video. And that's so that we can help, all of us can be part of getting this message out there so that we can start saving some lives. All right, let's get into the guts of this video and start talking about some of the things that I think have contributed to Ryan's passing. So this morning I've been in touch with Justin from Mojave County 4x4 Recovery. They're a volunteer four-wheel drive recovery group for their local four-wheel drive area. And they were asked to be involved in the post-tragedy recovery by Aidan Towing, who was, was responsible for that recovery in that situation. Now, Justin has given me permission to use the images that you see in this video. So obviously, I don't have all of the information. I wasn't there. But I do have a lot of experience in four-wheel drive recovery, and I spend a lot of time thinking about it and talking to experts and discussing concepts and principles. On, on, a, on a range of different elements to do with recoveries and four wheel driving. So I think what I have to say is probably well worth listening to. But obviously we can disagree with each other and have a civil discussion about the principles. At the end of the day, I want to learn and I want to be able to bring what I've learned to the table so that we can discuss it and get out there and wheel well. So let's start talking about the hitch that was used in this recovery. So one of the things I've been observing and learning and discussing over the last period of time is to do with the comment, you should never recover off a tow ball. Now, I stand by that comment. I believe that comment is, is correct, and I've done content and videos about that. But let me unpack that a little bit further for you. The thinking around that comment is, do not recover off a tow ball. There's multiple different tow balls out there in the community. In America and the UK, we all have different types. That's one for my caravan. This is what I use here in Australia for towing you know, a little trailer around. It's a 50 millimeter ball. When we make the comment, do not recover off the tow ball, it's probably not the total best way to say it because what we're really getting at is if you don't recover off the tow ball, you're not recovering off the hitch, which is where we see a lot of failures. We see a lot of failures here and in, in this situation, that's where the failure point's been and I'll get to that in a moment. So when we say don't recover off the tow ball, there's issues there, firstly, your strap, when it's hooked to a tow ball, you can't tell me that looks like a hook on a crane, can you? And it's not closed loop. Now that's a whole subject we would need to unpack, but uh, unpack for you, but it's, it's not a good scenario to hook like that. Imagine if you're, recovering in this situation, it's easy for that to come off. And also, it's what we call single shear in this situation. So the tow ball can actually come off, bust off here. It has happened, and yes, we've all seen Ronnie Dahls trying to bust a tow ball myth, um, and you know he had, to, he had to cut the tow ball to get it to fail. But there have been recorded instances and videos done where uh, I've seen and sh stuff of tow balls that have failed right here. So it does happen. But the majority of the times we see it happen back here on the hitch. And you'll notice that this hitch is different to this hitch. 
And this comes back to an engineering principle that's been brought to bear. See how this hitch is welded at an angle to its, its receiver tube, whereas this is straight up and down. This is going to stop a tearing moment. There's a, a stress load that can happen at this point here. And if the weld starts to fail, then it will tear away from the hitch material. And so by adding the design, making the design like this, we add a lot more weld and we reduce that stress load down here in the root of the weld. But on this one here, you can see that it's, a, it's more of a 90 degree scenario. And so in a, in a towing application, this is just fine because, um, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just stay on this weld stress riser point here. So in this coupling, and this is why I use this hitch, there's very little distance from here to the center line of the ball. When the trailer's hooked on here, it's effectively pulling in a center line through the hitch. So it's really quite a strong design. Now, the hitch that was in this recovery, and you'll see an image on the screen now, it's what they call a drop hitch, and it's about, I believe it was about eight inches long. So I've set up this to be eight inches to give you an indication of where the tow ball on this hitch would have been. It would have been down here. So when they're doing this recovery, there's a lot of leverage being put up here onto the root of the weld where that stress riser is. Now you can see that the coupling has got that, that gusset up in here. Great, that, that helps spread the load in the hitch. But you can see at the end of that gusset, that's where the stress riser has been the greatest and it's torn from that point. Now the comments often made to me, I tow, I'll use American language, 14,000 pound trailer for us Australians, that's about a 7,000 kilo trailer. That's a lot of weight to have behind a vehicle, that's fine. The difference is this, that when we're towing, we're only introducing the tractive force into that tow ball. What do I mean by tractive force? That's the amount of traction your tyres have on the road. And despite you might think, well, I'm pulling 14,000 pound, you're doing it slowly and generating the force into that trailer over a period of time. A vehicle, and I'm actually gonna do a video shortly with my mate Robert Pepper, and we're gonna actually measure this tractive force element. But the vehicle actually doesn't produce a huge amount of force into this compared to what we can generate when we do a kinetic recovery, all right? So this is the next point I wanna raise. There's two types of recovery that we can do. Now they look exactly the same, but they are performed very differently. When I say exactly the same, you use the exact same equipment. You could use this, this recovery rope here. You could use a strap, a kinetic snatch strap. But one we call a tow recovery, and one we call a kinetic recovery. Two very different beasts. One is really, really safe, and one is not so safe, or it, it, it can be performed safely, a kinetic recovery it can be performed safely, but often they're not. Now, when we do a tow recovery, which is what, when I was, when I was reading the information on this situation, the, the driver of the, the vehicle doing the recovery, and um, that, he, he started out doing a tow recovery. Very good, that's, that's the way he should do it. And he's started to load up, and he's just using his tractive force to try and pull the vehicle out and he got nowhere. So then, without changing the setup of his vehicle, he put, stepped over into kinetic recovery. And the difference is he took a run up. So he, he backed the vehicle up, put some slack in the line and then took a short run up to generate some extra force and perform a kinetic recovery. To my understanding though, he wasn't using a recovery rope and he wasn't using a kinetic snatch strap. He was using a normal strap, a bit like this one. This isn't a snatch strap. I don't, I don't own any snatch straps. This is just a tree trunk protector, but this is just a strap that does not stretch. Okay, so effectively he was using something like this with no stretch in it. So the moment he, that went tight, he shock loaded all of his recovery equipment. Now without getting too deep and technical, when you do a kinetic recovery, you have that moment where things stretch. 
So all of the energy that the vehicle has built up is now introduced into the recovery rope or the snatch strap and it stretches. So there's a period of time where all of the energy is put into the rope before it recovers out the vehicle. Now in this situation, because he didn't have a stretchable strap there, all of the energy was put into the strap in an instant. And the, the loads happening down here were huge, obviously way too much for the hitch. You see, when you do a snatch recovery or a kinetic recovery, you generate energy, you basically charge up your vehicle and then you want to transfer the energy that your charged up vehicle has now generated. You want to transfer that energy into the strap and then from the strap into the bogged vehicle. And if you don't have a stretchable strap in there, that's where things can go wrong. We also, you'll hear people say you never recover with a chain. You can do a tow recovery with a chain, you never do a kinetic recovery with a chain. I hope that's helped you understand a little bit of the difference between the different types of straps, the way we should use them, and why that hitch failed the way it did. Now, so when we move forward, we hear people saying, do not recover off the tow ball. The language we're using there is to co communicate this whole device here. Don't recover off one of these. Don't recover off one of these. It's just not worth it. Because the solution is so easy. It is so easy to do it so much safer. So let's talk about the solutions. This is a hitch receiver, and this is a soft shackle. It's an excellent way to connect to the rear of a four-wheel drive. So to use it, we simply slide the hitch receiver in there. We take our hitch pin and we slide it through the hitch, hitch pin and job done. That's attached. And companies like Factor 55 are creating these products. They're putting an extensive amount of money into testing and, and making sure that this is a good, safe recovery point for the four-wheel drive. Now within all of this, and again, this could be a whole nother video, but within all of this, we are attaching it to a drawbar system on the rear of the four-wheel drive. Now here in Australia, we have to have all of these drawbar systems engineered and rated. So they do have some engineering standards in there and they are over-engineered. Here's the key point. If you have a well-designed, correctly fitted recovery or tow hitch on the rear of the four-wheel drive, we're not seeing them fail in recoveries, assuming that the recoveries are being performed correctly. They have been known to fail when they're a light duty hitch that's been used in a heavy duty environment or one that's been used around salt a lot and there's corroded bolts or rusty chassis and stuff like that. That's outside of the norm and that comes back to the owner operator making sure that their equipment is in good order. But this vehicle here hasn't got any of those problems. The tow hitch is in excellent order and most vehicles out there will be in that situation. And so that makes a really nice recovery point that is engineered and we I think it's safe to say we know it's going to be a good safe recovery point. So here's the question, because I get this in the comments on my videos, is I've been doing tow bar recoveries off hitches like this for years and it's perfectly safe. Well, I think the proof's in the pudding and I think Ryan and his family would disagree with you, just my thoughts on that. But here's the thing, how hard is it to undo that pin and slide that in and then we have the job done? Safe, no issues, no risk. So I'd leave that with you. Look, if you disagree with me, that's okay. Let's have a civil discussion about it in the comments down below. And um, yeah, just comment. I'm, I'm interested to have the conversation. I don't know everything. I wanna learn. And uh, I'm always looking to update my content if I can see a valid reason to change my methodology. So let's move on to some of the other things I wanna talk about. So I wanna give you a tool now to use when you're in a recovery situation. And this was developed by some friends of mine, John and Carl Eggenhausen from Get About Train, Full Drive Training here in Australia. Great guys do great work across the world training people in four wheel drive recoveries. So this is called the hierarchy of recovery. And it's as simple as this. When you go out four wheel driving and you get bogged, this is where you start. Is my four wheel drive in four wheel drive? Have I let some air out of my tires to increase the amount of traction that my vehicle can have? If it's yes to all of those things, the next thing we're going to do is get out the shovel and 
release some load from the vehicle. So dig out the tyres, dig out underneath the chassis and so on and so forth. And that may be enough for you to get out of the bogging situation. As you can see in this tragic situation, that hasn't been done and that would have reduced the recovery load. Now, if you've done the shoveling, which was always going to be a good thing to get done, the next thing you're going to use is use some rocks, some sticks, um, you're going to use some traction boards to give you traction under the tyres and the wheels. You might get your jack and jack the car up and put some um, sticks or boards under the tyres to get the vehicle moving forward. If you're still bogged, we now step up to the next level, which is where we get another vehicle involved. And we're going to do the tow recovery. That's right, that's the one where we don't accelerate. We drive the vehicle out until a strap, a chain, or, or a recovery rope is taut, and then we try to drive off and pull the vehicle out of the bogging situation. Now, you might, might be thinking, Matthew, you just said use a chain. In a tow recovery, a chain is fine because you're not shock loading anything, you're just pulling. The next thing we're going to use, if that doesn't work, is we will winch. We can do single line winch, we can do double line winch, we can do winch redirections. There's multiple ways we can use a winch to recover a bogged vehicle. And for me, that's about, by the time I get to a winch, I've pretty much got any vehicle out of any bogging situation. And then the last method that we would use if a winching situation has failed is a kinetic recovery. And that's where we're going to use something like this recovery rope here from Factor 55. And we're going to generate that kinetic energy and pull the vehicle out. Now here's the, the big concern with kinetic energies. Everything up to this point has been controlled. It, even when you're winching, you can watch the winch rope coming in and if something's going wrong in the recovery, you stop winching. You don't overload in a winching situation as in put in too much energy because the winch just runs out of power. So it's a lot safer method. Once we get to a kinetic recovery, we have an uncontrolled energy release. Let's think about it like this. This vehicle's bogged and it needs 1,000 kilograms of force or 1,000 pounds of force, it doesn't really matter, for it to get out of that bog situation. So what I need to do is with my F250, put 1,001 kilograms or pounds of force into this vehicle and this vehicle will be recovered because I only need one pound more force to overcome the bogging situation. You understand the principle I'm getting at? You don't need much more, you only need a tiny amount more force than, the, than the, the, the bogging situation requires and you'll have the vehicle out. Once we go into a kinetic recovery though, we have that uncontrolled energy. We don't actually know how much force we're putting into the recovery rope because there's a, a principle, and I want to point you to a video, a link down below, by Robert Pepper, and he explains the amount of force that you can generate with your four-wheel drive when you do a kinetic recovery. And the numbers are terrifying. Think of it like this. If you are at four kilometers per hour, and you generate X amount of force at four kilometers an hour, then you increase your speed to eight kilometers an hour. You don't now have double the amount of force being applied, you have four times the amount of force being generated by that vehicle. It's huge, so it's a scale that just gets larger and larger and the numbers get terrifying with the amount of force you can generate with your vehicle in a kinetic recovery. And so that's why a kinetic recovery is the potentially the most dangerous recovery method out there. Saying all of that, they can be performed safely, and they are, they're, they're being performed all the time perfectly safely, but we are, that's where we are seeing the, the bad failures in the four-wheel drive community. I hope this video has been inspiring to you. I hope it brings a small level of healing to the family, and I hope that you would learn from this and that you would share it around so that we can get the message out there. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.